Hello again. Well, my wife has always said to me, um, since pretty much since we first got married, maybe just a bit before, that I am a collector of collections. Uh, she'd like me to get rid of a lot of things, I'm sure she would. Um, she doesn't quite understand. It's not. It's not just the value of things. It's the memories that are associated with certain things. So really, collecting. Well, collecting records, collecting books. Um, she doesn't quite understand. Anyway, some years ago, um, I had this book passed on to me by a. Um, um, written by a gentleman called Hunter Davis. Now the name may or may not mean anything to you. He was the first official and still is uh, biographer of the Beatles. And uh, we'll come to that anyway in a bit. But this book was passed over to me by uh, a friend. Confessions of a Collector by Hunter Davis. Now you'll see here uh, Blow football, a copy of the Oz magazine there, uh, Penny Blacks. I thought I thought I had a widespread of collections, but this guy he takes the biscuit. He, I've read lots of his stuff down the years. I didn't particularly enjoy the Beatles biography. Um, I read I've read it when it first came out and uh, I read it again some years later and I thought that nah, wasn't for me but nothing wrong with his writing it's just maybe in the intervening years I'd been spoiled by reading other people's uh, uh, things about the Beatles there's so much information any anyway he says here in the um, fly notes here it says uh, collecting things is the world's biggest hobby there are very few people who do not collect something consciously or otherwise. The perennial popularity of such television programs as the Antiques Roadshow, Bargain Hunt, uh, watched and enjoyed by millions of Britons, is eloquent testimony to its enduring appeal. Well, yes, I, I would agree with him there. Right. Um, he collects uh, football programs, children's books, Richmond Crompton books, you know, just William. The list is absolutely endless. He, he, he must have had an extension to his house anyway. And uh, there's just a little bit of his Beatles collection. Um, you'll recognise the pictures, no doubt. Uh, posters and... Oh, this is a great book. It was twenty pounds when it came out, um, but I, I don't think the person who passed it over to me paid anything like that. In fact, I know they didn't because there's a sticker on the back, and it says uh, Seven Hospice Books, three pounds." <laughs> right? He says here. It's quite interesting. This. My biggest and best collection is The Beatles, but it's a bit of a cheat in a way, in that I was fortunate enough to have been had privileged access to them, and so found myself with certain items that ordinary fans, ordinary collectors, in the ordinary way of things, would never have managed to acquire. But all the same, I was, and still am, a collector of all things Beatley. Such a shame that the best items are now astronomically expensive, most of them far out of my reach as well. Um, he says, I got to write their only ever authorised biography by the simple means of asking. I'd gone to see Paul McCartney when the single Eleanor Rigby came out in 1966. A year later, I went to see him at his local uh, at his London home in St John's Wood and with a different hat on this time as a screenwriter I was writing the film script for a novel of mine which was being made into a film here we go round the mulberry bush we hoped Paul might do the theme tune for the film but he never did while I was with him however I put 
to him the suggestion that there should be a proper hardback book about the Beatles. What a pitch, eh? Um, so that for the rest of his life, when people asked the same old dopey questions about the Beatles, he would be able to say, look in the book, it's all there. Firstly, I had to talk to the band's manager, Brian Epstein, to get his agreement. Paul, being ever so kind and good at PR, said he'd help me write the letter, which I sent to Brian on the 31st of December 1966. I still have the carbon copy of it as the original went to Brian, of course. This became my first personal item a Beatles memorabilia. I got Brian's agreement and the publisher signed the contract, which I also still have. I spent most of 67 to 8 interviewing the Beatles at their homes and in the studio and talking to their mums and visiting places that they had been, such as Hamburg. Great. <laughs> uh, the, the book's absolutely astonishing what it collects. It collects um, letters to Prime Ministers, from Prime Ministers. I, I, I was astounded that somebody could have such a, a wide taste in uh, collecting things. This book is one to look out for anyway, uh, especially as the connection with him being the official Beatles biographer. Uh, I know that uh, sometime or other people have said, well, they weren't really happy with what he did, but there you go. Uh, I think original copies of his book, hardback, um, go for a fair amount of money now anyway. But there is Confessions of a Collector, Hunter Davis. And uh, best-selling author Hunter Davis offers a richly entertaining look at some of his favourite things. And he give you flavour here. Stamps, football, the Beatles, books, prime ministers, toys, games, paintings, paper mags and comics, famous autographs, the Lake District. He doesn't collect the Lake District, probably just items about it. China. Uh, not the place, but, you know, pots, postcards, ephemera, suffragettes, not the actual suffragettes because they would be too old and probably they are well gone now. Uh, just details about them. The joys and pains of collecting and collecting myself. Whatever he means by that. Right. Thanks for watching this. If you've enjoyed it, Please give me a thumbs up that you've enjoyed it so that I know when I carry on getting things out that I know that you'll like. And if you haven't subscribed, good time to subscribe and then you know that you'll get a flurry of uh, videos made by yours truly. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.